The Panasonic LX10, a portable video studio. Let's check it out. What's up everybody, it's the Everyday Dad, and today what we're gonna talk about is the unboxing and my initial impressions of my brand new B camera, ultimate camera, talking head camera, everything other camera except this camera, the Panasonic LX10. Inside the box you'll get the camera itself, a battery pack, an AC adapter, a USB connection cable, a little wrist strap, and the books that nobody ever reads. So I've been looking for a small, high quality, point and shoot camera to help with both out of the house filming and talking head stuff here in the house. And theoretically, the LX10 should check every box that I want it to, but we know how that can turn out. Sony RX0. So I purchased my LX10 for $597, which I absolutely think is a acceptable price for what you get out of it. For example, the RX0 was $700 and you don't get a quarter of the features you get out of this camera. It is 105.5 millimeters tall, it is 60 millimeters high, and it is 42 millimeters deep. It weighs roughly 310 grams with both a battery and memory card inside of it, which is a half of what my G7 vlogging setup weighs. Inside of the camera you'll find a 1 inch 20.1 megapixel sensor, which is pretty much the standard for these high quality point and shoots. It does have a lens aperture of between f1.4 and 2.8. The 1.4 only works when it's as wide as it can possibly go. It has a really neat little clickable aperture ring on the front of it, which is one of the reasons I purchased this camera. It has 5 axis hybrid optical image stabilization, and that means that it should take the little jitters out of your shaking if you use it. However, it's not like my Sony FDR-X3000. It's not gimbal quality, but it's pretty good quality when it comes to stabilization. It does have a digital zoom up to four times, and it has a three times optical zoom. It does do intelligent autofocus, and it does post-focus features when you take photos. It does have the ability to take 4K video, which is 3840 by 2160, up to 30 frames per second and 100 megabits per second. There is also a super high frame rate mode where you can do 240 frames per second video capture. The battery should last with continuous recording for 70 minutes. One of the most important things about this camera I cannot overstate it, is the tiltable screen on it. It has a 1 million dot LCD screen, it is a touch screen, and having these screens makes filming so much easier. If you're going to use a cell phone to capture the same kind of images, you still have your screen, but you'll have to use the crappy front camera, whereas the screen on this camera just is incredible. I love, love how they have the screen set up on this camera. Now that we've got the basic specs out of the way, let's test this baby out. The main things that I look for in a camera are ease of use, image quality, and stabilization. And the first thing you'll notice about this camera, if you're used to using a DSLR or even a small mirrorless camera, is how light it is. This camera weighs very little when compared to my normal videography setup, and its portability makes it very, very attractive to me. It's both fast to start and very easy to use. It only takes a few seconds to go from nothing to filming and all of the options, dials, and buttons on the body itself give you incredible control over your photos or video. Like we already mentioned, a huge benefit of this camera over a smartphone when it comes to ease of use is the flippable LCD screen. It's a touch screen which lets you set the focus wherever you want, and it makes it so easy to frame your shot and just start recording. I really, really like the idea of having a front-facing screen on any camera I own, and it's one of my biggest hesitations in switching to a Sony. The image quality for how small this camera is is actually very amazing, and I'm not a camera expert, but it really, really looks good. Audio isn't the greatest, and one of its major downfalls is there isn't a microphone input on this camera, and that kind of stinks. But the onboard audio isn't terrible either. Hey, we're here at the fair while we're doing our audio test for the Lumix LX10. Uh, this is about as loud as it's gonna get, so if you can hear me now, you're gonna be able to hear just about anything. So audio test, one, two, three, four. You can see we're on the, we're on the Ferris wheel. The everyday wife doesn't want to be part of it. High five. I, put your hand, you can put your hand in the shot. High I'm five. not a fan of the Ferris wheel. High five. Wheel. Oh, she God. doesn't like the Ferris wheel. Here we go. We're going down. Oh, God. 
The camera is really impressing me though. Are you being strong? Look at all that depth of field in the background. Like it, it has a very fast aperture when it's wide open. And it's f1.4, which means you're gonna get a lot of this subject isolation. I'm not even. This is as far out as I can get just, with my arm. It is a really, really good camera. I really hate shaky footage, and I buy a ton of aids to help keep my video as stable as possible. So when I can get built-in stabilization, especially 5-axis, that weighs very large in my book. We'll do a more thorough review of this camera in the future, but I really wanted to start using it, so I wanted to give you my initial impressions of this camera. For its size and its ability, this camera is so amazing. I know high quality point shoots have been out there forever. I really just found it recently and I am blown away by this camera. If you actually watch my last video about budget Bluetooth speakers, this is what I did all the talking head footage with. I can't even tell the difference between this and my mirrorless camera. I love, I mean, Panasonic is not paying me for this. I just love this camera. Like I, for as disappointed as I was in the RX-0, I'm as happy as I could be with this camera. I really didn't think it was gonna wow me that much. I was planning on having to go buy a Sony RX line, but this camera's amazing. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Also, click that subscribe button and join the awesome community we've got going on here. We do tech reviews every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Well, hey, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure out how awesome these cameras are to use and how actually easy they are to get incredible footage, you can figure it out. Thanks for watching.